Hi guys, how are you doing? And welcome back. Let's talk about running Unify Network Controller in a container on Docker. And in this case, my Docker host is a Raspberry Pi 5. Recently, I moved to a Raspberry Pi 5 from a Raspberry Pi 3. And the tree was running perfectly fine as well, but I needed more resources and more compute specifically. So, and I thought if I'm moving over to a Raspberry Pi 5, let's go for the bigger model with more memory. And the Unify network application is one of those surf surfaces you can perfectly run on a Raspberry Pi, but I don't want to run it natively. Of course, I'm going to run it on Docker on that Raspberry Pi 5 as a container. Let's get into it. Now, in order to run it on Docker, I will need an image, right? And I'm going for the image created by linuxserver.io. This is the image I'm going to use, the Docker Unify network application. And this image is provided by linuxserver.io. As of the moment of making this video, the version of the Unify network application software inside this image, that's 9.3.45. So if you're going to migrate from a older system to the container, your previous system, you need to make sure that the software, the Unify software actually running your setup now is not newer than the one in the container because the container is backwards compatible, not forwards compatible, right? So in this case, the container has 9.3.45. That's a version of the Unify network application software in here. Now I need to make sure that it is not older than the one I am running in the virtual machine at the moment. My old setup is running in a virtual machine natively and I want to move away from that. So let's go and check what version that software is. So this is my virtual machine, which is running the Unify network application at this moment. If I log in and I go to settings, I can see that the version of that software is 9.1.120. So this version is older than the one we are going to get when we deploy that container. Like so, this is version 9.3. I am running at the moment in 9.1 on my virtual machine that natively has the software running. So we're going to move away from that. So the first thing to do, of course, is make sure that we have a backup of the configuration because this setup contains all my devices in here as you can see here these are the devices in my network and i don't want to reconfigure everything and the nice thing here is that we can just create a backup right so if you go to system and then we can go to the backup tab and now you can download a backup of the current setup and this is the backup we're going to import once the container is running so let's do that click on download and now i can download the latest version. I have an automatic backup schedule checked in here. You can see that there are several versions of configuration files in here, but I want the latest version and I want only the settings because I don't care for all that monitoring data in there. I just want the settings. So when I import this in the container, everything will be there as well. Let's wait for it to actually download it. It has prepared the configuration file and now I can save the configuration and this is the version we are going to import in that container. Now that we have our configuration backed up, it's time to create a stack in Portainer. So go to Portainer, go to stacks, and we will add a new stack, call it YouTube demo, select the web editor option in there, and then paste the content of my Docker Compose in here. This is my Docker Compose. I will leave it as a example in the description of the video and also on my website, you can find it. You need to make sure that you change the configuration according to your needs and your system. So if you're looking at the environment section, so this is the first part is for the network application itself. That is the container. This part will deploy. And then at the bottom, we have the second container being deployed. And that is a unified DB. That is that MongoDB container. Make sure that you, when deploying the MongoDB container, you actually tag it with the ARM64 V8 tag. In that way, Docker will pull down a image that is uh, specifically for ARM CPUs, and that's what the Raspberry Pi is, of course. So this is something to pay attention to. The other thing is configuration data, persistent data, right? So the way I am doing this is, as you can see here, this is the part for that uh, network application. So this is the folder within the container itself that is slash configs. This is a place where the software will look for all the configuration files. And every time I restart my container or my Docker host, I want that data to be persistent, right? Because that is configuration data, monitoring data, etc. 
I want the data to be kept and survive a reboot or a restart. So that means I need to redirect that folder in the image to a physical location on my Docker host. And that's what I'm doing here. I created a folder in the home directory of the Docker host on my Raspberry Pi, and that's the folder I'm redirecting within, I'm mapping within the image to the slash config folder. This is the way for me to keep my data persistent. And that's the way I'm doing it for the unified database uh, container as well. I created a folder on my Docker host that is the unified DB folder, and that is living in my home directory on the Docker host on the Raspberry Pi. And I'm redirecting that folder within the image to the slash data slash DB uh, folder. That is the folder where the database files are being kept for MongoDB. And then we have a specific .js file, which is created on my Docker host. I created that on my Docker host in this folder. And now I am mapping that file to a specific location within the Docker container, because that's the place where MongoDB will look for that file once it starts up. And the content of that file, I will put it on screen here. As you can see here, there is some connection information in there, which is being expected by MongoDB for um, connection. If the Unify uh, network application wants to connect to MongoDB, this is the information that it needs to match. I will leave the content of this file and of course my Docker Compose in the description of this video so you can copy that and adjust it to your needs. And once you're done with the configuration part, you've created that file, your folders are in place, the mappings are all in place, you can then just scroll to the bottom, click on deploy the stack. Now you will see that if you go to stack and then click on the stack you created for those containers, you will see the associated containers running on that stack. And if you want to change something, for configuring in the configuration of one of the containers. You can, of course, go into the container itself and then click on duplicate edit, and then you can edit the parameters in here. Of course, you can always click on editor and then edit the information within your Docker Compose within the stack and then click on update the stack. It will redeploy those containers with the new settings and the configuration. All right, my stack is deployed. I can see that both of my containers are running up and running. And that means if I go to the IP address of this Raspberry Pi Docker host and I enter port 8443, you can see it here. Now I am able to reach the Unify network server. So that means my containers are running up and running. I can start from here in creating a configuration, but because I already have the configuration backed up. I'm just going to restore the server from a backup. Click on upload backup file. It will ask me, do you know for sure if that you want to restore this? And it will also tell you that the version, this configuration file is created from that Unify software that is, that is version 9.1.120. So I know for sure that it is compatible with the newer version of the Unify software in my Docker container. Let's click on confirm and wait for the backup restoration to finish. And we can see that it has automatically rebooted the configuration or the container. And it is telling me it is running version 9.3.45. That is the version, of course, in this image. If you go back to the image space, we can see that is the version of the Unify software. So let's go back to my new Unify controller in here and let's log in with my user account, which should give me access now. And there we are. The configuration has been imported. I can see that there are some things offline. And that's the thing you will find as well, right? So after you've restored the configuration, if you go into this dashboard, it will tell you that things are offline. And why is that? Because there is a specific setting we need to adjust because we have changed IP address for the Unify software. My previous Unify installation, it was running on an, another IP address. This one is running on the .13 IP address. My infrastructure is trying to connect to the IP address of the old network application server. So we need to change that. The way we do that, there are two ways to go around. One way is you need to SSH, using SSH, go into all the devices and then change that IP address for the controller, for that application, the network application now. That's 
that can be a hassle, right? So we are going to do it on the system. And the way we do that is click on settings and let's click on system. And we need to change the interface to legacy because if you change the interface to legacy in a container setup, it will show you that one field we need to change that IP address. So if I click on legacy, I will say, yes, use legacy. Now it refreshes the page. And if I go to the settings option in here and click on network application, now this looks of course a little bit different because this is the old interface. And we can see that if you click on network application, there is my IP address, which is being reported to all the devices that they need to check in on that IP address. That IP address, that's not the IP address of my network application server anymore. It is dot 13. So I will change this one to dot 13. And this is correct. That's the only thing we need to change and click on apply, click on confirm. Now that that IP address has been changed, we'll go back to the dashboards and let's click on interfaces to select the new interface again. And if we go back to the Unify devices, you will see that the controller will now, that application will now inform the devices that they need to check in on that new IP address. That's the way to change that configuration if you're running the Unify network application in a Docker container. And there we are. We can now see that the devices are coming into the green. This one is still adopting and is still adopting. These ones are perfectly fine now. So that's make sure that you understand that you need to change that setting using that legacy interface if you're running the Unify network application within containers. And there we are. That's the way to change your Unify network application software from a hosted solution in a virtual machine or a physical host to a containerized setup using Docker. In my case, I'm using that on a Raspberry Pi 5. For my environment, it's perfectly fine. Maybe you have that amount of devices that you need a dedicated setup. Of course, you can do that. And you need to understand that if you go to the containerized setup and you change the IP address of the actual host, right? You need to change that IP address using that legacy interface. Otherwise, you need to use SSH to go into all your devices and then update the IP address of that network application server. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something new in the video. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons below the video. It helps out my channel a lot. And for now, take care. See you in the next video. Bye.